just the thought of having your sister not here when you wake up is just terrifying. What's up, Mob Crew? I'm Chris, and today's video is about a possible serial killer that only kills every five years. That's right. Ten years ago, two girls were found slain, and their murder has gone unsolved. And now that we're approaching the five-year anniversary of Abby and Libby, could these two cases be connected? There are so many eerie similarities, like both locations had the word bridge in them, and so much more that I will go over in today's video. Also, today's missing person case is Mackenzie Renee Prater from St. Joseph, Missouri. She will be featured at the end of my video, so please stay until the end for that. Thank you so much. Welcome back to the channel, everybody, where we cover murder, mystery, to the paranormal. So before the murders of Abby Williams and Liberty German in the Delphi case, there was another double homicide that is still unsolved to this day, and that is the murders of Cook and Collins. Both were two young girls who were cousins. On Friday the 13th in July 2012, 10-year-old Lyric Cook Morrissey and 8-year-old Elizabeth Collins the two girls went on a bike ride close to the Myers Lake in Evansdale, Iowa. This spot was a popular fishing and recreation area with about 4,700 residents. The girls would be spotted on Brovan Boulevard at approximately 1223 and for the last time between 1230 and 1 p.m. on Gilbert Drive. Cook and Collins were supposed to be back by 2 p.m. After the two girls did not return home when they were supposed to, the grandmother then called the local law enforcement at 2.40 p.m. to report them missing. And so the family and many of the locals got together and would go out and look for them. So with local law enforcement and the locals all searching for the two girls, they started searching around the Myers Lake in Evansdale. They would eventually come across some of the belongings in Elizabeth's purse along with the two bikes that were later found on the trail on the southeast corner of Myers Lake around 4 p.m. that day. But there were no clues as to their whereabouts. Local law enforcement would bring in search dogs and they would actually get a hit on both scents of the two girls and that would lead near Myers Lake. So they ended up sending in dive teams and even began to drain the lake to see if they could find their bodies or any clues. After days of searching, it was around this time that the mother of Cook would be interviewed and her interview would be somewhat alarming as she didn't seem too affected by her daughter's disappearance. Here is a short clip actually are here with the mother of Lyric this morning um, to tell us a little bit about what's going on. How, how has it been these, these last few days? Um, the first three days we were very active, searching, going through the woods. Um, the last few days this week when they're not allowing the citizen search has been um, a lot more difficult. Um, not having as much to do, keeping busy, and as the time continues to go on, so do your concerns and worries about what might be happening to them and where are they. I'm glad they're draining the lake to rule that out since the dogs picked up their scent at the water's edge. Um, but I, um, no, I, because they've searched so well in the surrounding area, um, my only concern is that they're far away, you know, days away, maybe another state something like that that's my concern um, and if they are you know how do we find them there so that's kind of the the thing about the media that their faces in the story gets out you know to the different states now along with the odd behavior of the mother the father of cook dan morrissey was into cooking meth and the two parents were eventually caught and sentenced for their involvement in drugs and some have speculated that the two girls were abducted because the father was in the drug world, but this has not been verified. 
After four months had passed, sadly, on Wednesday, December 5th, 2012, the bodies of Cook and Collins were found by hunters at the Seven Bridges Wildlife Park near Readyland in Bremier County, a wildlife area approximately 25 miles from where the girls were last seen. The details of their deaths have never been released, and the case would go unsolved to this day nearly 10 years later, and the law enforcement of Evansdale have been tight-lipped about the details of the case, but suspect that it was a good possibility that it could have been a local who was responsible for the double homicide. So this case could be related to the Delphi murders as there are a lot of similarities. It could be a serial killer who murders every five years, and if so, this year would be the year it could happen again. So let's look at the similarities between the two double homicides. Both cases had two young girls being murdered. Then you have both locations that have the word bridge in them, Monon High Bridge and Seven Bridges. Both towns are small towns. Both cases are believed to be committed by a local. Both areas would be considered to be used by hunters. And the more eerie similarities would be both happened on the 13th. You have Evansdale on 7-13-12 and the Delphi murders with 2-13-17. It literally consists with the same five digits and the murders happened five years apart both numbers add up to 32. Both happen during the daylight and one could even say almost the exact time of day that the killer had met up with the girls. After he kills, he could move to another small town, blend in with the locals and take his time waiting literally years before striking again. This is all speculation, of course, but if this is a possible serial killer who takes five years off in between double homicides, then we approach the fifth year anniversary of the Delphi murders of Abby and Libby, and could this killer be getting ready to do it again? Let me know what you all think about this in the comments down below. Please smash that like button and share this video with a friend. Subscribe if you are new. Please consider supporting my channel by becoming a member or by donating to the link in the description. Shout out to my two new members, Copper Horse and Linda Live. Shout out to Tina Moose for posting the missing in the comments. And today's missing person case is Mackenzie Renee Prater from St. Joseph, Missouri. She has brown hair, brown eyes. She is 14 and just went missing. So please take a close look. Please take care of yourself and be sure to tell someone you love them and I love you all. Thank you.